Hello and welcome back to Football Daily, where today we're looking at 10 players across Europe who are too good for their current sides. 10. Domenico Berardi A wide forward who joins the Swolo as a 16-year-old, Domenico Berardi helped the club win promotion to Syria in 2013 and contributed 47 goals in his first 58 starts in the top flight between the ages of 19 and 21 to keep the Nero Verdi up. At the time, he looked like becoming a world beater, and though injuries and club chaos prevented that, he scored 14 and assisted 10 in league play in 2019-20, breaking the 20 mark for the first time in five years. The Italian was one of just nine players across Europe's top five leagues to reach double figures for both goals and assists and with good reason. His tally of over four shots and two key passes per 90 were both career highs, and his technical security meant he lost the ball far less than most wingers, coughing up possession just once a game, compared to two for the elite wingers like Hyungmin Son and Sadio Mane. With right wingers in short supply, a fast and skillful left footer cutting in from the flank with the ability to both shoot and create is a rare and valuable asset. At 26, he may no longer be a wonder kid, but Berardi has plenty left to offer both his country and any lucky club who is willing to take a punt. 9. Gerard Moreno On first glance, this may seem harsh. Villarreal finished fifth last time out, and it made excellent summer signings, like left-back Pervis Ustupinan and Danny Parejo, as they bid to return to the Champions League. But the club has also lost quality, with Akambi joining Lyon, and Gisa returning to Fulham, and Cazorla moving to Qatar putting even more pressure on Moreno to deliver. Last year, Moreno scored 18 and assisted 5 to finish as the top-scoring Spaniard in La Liga, and behind only Messi and Benzema overall. The best season of his career and his third time hitting double figures in the division. But Acambi and Cazorla's departures mean Villarreal's second and third highest scorers are gone, as well as their best creator. Moy Gomez was the next best contributor, with just 5 goals and 4 assists. And unless he or someone else can step up, Moreno would be the sole scorer in the side, having had a hand in 37% of his team's goals last season. The club hierarchy is volatile too, sacking Javier Calleja at the end of the campaign after he guided them to a 9 place and 16 point improvement on the year before, just so they could bring in Unai Emery. Moreno couldn't be blamed for looking for the exit. 8. Yves Basuma after two years at Brighton, Yves Basuma is finally showing the quality which saw him reach the AFCON final before his 20th birthday. A hot end to the 1920 campaign brought the Mali and Brighton's June Player of the Month award, and second place in July. And at 24, this season should be the one he finally explodes. Despite missing 26 league fixtures out of the last 76, and occasionally drifting out of games, Basuma put up consistently strong stats, averaging five tackles and interceptions a match in England. He's deceptively quick and skillful, completing 2.4 dribbles per 90 last season, with only Kovacic, Undumbele and teammate Steven Alzate managing more among the league's midfielders. And there should be more to come. In his early days at Lille, Basuma had a freer role, and completed more dribbles, won possession more often, and was way more expansive with his passing, with twice as many progressive passes per game as today. Now adding the discipline to match his game reading and athleticism, Basuma seems to have finally gained Graham Potter's trust. In an underrated Seagull squad, he could be the star who drives the team into the top half. Before we go any further, just a quick reminder to subscribe to Football Daily and hit that notification bell to never miss one of our top 10s. 7. Mohamed Simakan At this point, it's hard to kick a ball anywhere in Europe without being linked with AC Milan. But Mohamed Simakan has more of a chance of actually earning the move than most. The 20-year-old Frenchman came through the ranks at Strasbourg, establishing himself in the team last season as the Alsatians laboured to 11th. Liga regularly produces defenders with insane numbers, and Simakan is no exception, making five tackles and interceptions a game with a sky-high 82% success rate, incredibly rare at his age. In fact, his profile looks a lot like Wan-Bissaka's, though his 6'2 frame and positional versatility might suit him to the right centre-half slot in a back three, where he occasionally features. Still, most teams prefer a back four and would use Simakan at right back, and if he's going to develop there, he has to be a threat going forward. It doesn't look like he'll do that with vision, as he currently only creates a chance every two games, but he's shown signs of dribbling ability, beating his man once a match, enough to earn a second look. Also attracting interest from Monaco and Atalanta, Simakan could be the next offensive star out of France. 6. Florian Niederlichner A 29-year-old at Augsburg is never going to headline transfer talk. But Florian Niederlichner is the bright spot in a team on the wane, and the German is used to beating the odds. Kicked out of 1860 Munich's academy at 12 for being too slow and short, he played amateur ball while working in industrial management, before getting a shot in the 5th division with FC Ismaning. 
By that point, the tiny pre-team was a 6 foot 2 attacking midfielder. And after hitting double figures in the 5th, 3rd and 2nd tiers, he finally reached the Bundesliga, making his debut in the top flight with Mainz at the age of 25 in 2015. But it was only after his move to Augsburg in 2019 for just 2.5 million euros that his performances truly took off. Last season, though the club netted just 45 in Bundesliga play, Niederlichner contributed 19, or 42%, featuring as a number 10 and as a striker, and putting up 0.65 xG per 90, the same as Chelsea new boy Kai Havertz. While he claims he fueled his lower league performances with pizza and kebabs, the forward is a model of hard work and dedication. His extraordinary rise deserves to be capped with a big money contract. 5. Teji Savanir Two years ago we said Teji Savanir was too good for Nîmes. Now he's too good for Montpellier. The Frenchman grabbed 20 goals and assists in 2018-19 from central midfield. And though that plummeted to a middling 8 last term, that was still almost a quarter of Montpellier's total goals, as Le Palais came 8th in Ligue 1 shortened campaign. Like at Nîmes, Savinier has huge defensive output, with 5 tackles and deceptions per match, the same as Declan Rice and N'Golo Kante, and is great at wriggling out of tight spots and advancing possession, leading his team in dribbles with 2 per 90 and passes into the final third, with the same number each game as Premier League midfielders like Fabinho and Giovanni Lo Celso. And while the 2021 season is in its infancy, he's showing signs of rediscovering his goal-scoring form of old hitting three goals and assists through the first four match weeks to put Montpellier in the Champions League spots. If the 28-year-old were a few years younger, he'd surely be linked with a huge move. But he's still too good for a middling French outfit. A bargain signing for anyone paying attention. 4. Ricardo Orsolini Many players on our list are prospects, some are too old for a big move, but Ricardo Orsolini is 23 and has the talent to go almost anywhere. His Bologna team could only come 12th in Serie A last year. And though Orsolini ended up with a modest 14 goal contributions, that was 27% of his team's total, and less than he deserved, with XG saying he should have had 18 goals and assists. A left footer who predominantly plays off the right, Orsolini was signed by Juventus at 20, but only as a money spinner, going out on loan to Atalanta and Bologna before the Rossa Blue made his move permanent in 2019. Fast and capable of physically competing with big defenders, Orsolini's broad skill set makes him unpredictable for opponents, and saw him lead his team in shots, chances created, and dribbles in 2019 20. In 2019, the Italian earned his first international cap, and grabbed a goal and an assist in just 45 minutes against Armenia. With a dearth of outstanding wide talent in the Azzurri squad, Euro 2021 should be his chance to shine, and earn the move his performances deserve. 3. Richarlison now in his fourth Premier League season, Richarlison already feels like a fixture, despite being just 23. At the time of writing, only 12 Brazilians have made more appearances than him in the competition, and with an excellent injury history which has seen him miss just 5 of the last 117 Premier League matches, he could yet go on to break the record currently held by Lucas Leiva. When Everton paid Watford £35 million for him in 2018, there were plenty of sceptics, but his output since has been elite. He bagged 13 in each of his first two years on Merseyside, and a partnership with Calvert-Lewin has seen his creativity flourish too, with one assist in his first campaign turning into three in his second, and two in his first three games of 2021. And the arrival of James Rodriguez should take his play to new heights. Richarlison now takes four shots a game, up from 2.8, and he's also dribbling constantly, completing an insane five take-ons per 90 this term, Messi or Zaha stats. Everton have the cash to fight off advances, rejecting a 100 million euro bid from Barcelona in January. But Richarlison deserves the biggest stage, and will surely end up in the Champions League with or without the Toffees. 2. Calvin Stengs When the 2019-20 era divisi was cancelled, AZ Alkmaar must have been furious. At the time, they were second to Ajax only by goal difference, were six points clear of third, and had the best defence in the league. But while an excellent campaign may have been denied silverware, it did see the development of attacking midfielder Calvin Stengs into an Eredivisie all-star. Stengs grabbed 12 goal involvements in 24 starts, and only 4 players created more chances in the Netherlands than he did. All of those were over 25, while Stengs is just 21. And unlike most creators, he wasn't reliant on set pieces, with just 8 of his 60 key passes coming from dead balls. His vision from open play rivaled the best in the country, with only Ziyech completing more through balls than him, and even when comparing him to youngsters in the top 5 leagues he shone, with no under-22 across Europe passing into the box more often than him. With 2.5 dribbles a game and at just under 6 foot tall, Stengs also has the athleticism to compete at the highest level, and in 2019 received his first international cap. A move simply can't be far away. 1. Danny Ings 
Now 28, Danny Ings is finally showing what he can do at the highest level. Injuries and competition for places meant that 2019-20 was the first year since 2015 in which the forward made more than 25 league appearances. And he did so in style, playing every minute for Southampton to help the Saints to 11th, after a horror start saw them lose 8 of their first 12 fixtures. Ings scored 22 goals, second best in the league to Jamie Vardy, and the same as Abemiang, despite playing 300 minutes fewer than the Gabonese. In fact, when you take out penalties, he scored two more in league play than Cristiano Ronaldo did for Juventus, and took or assisted 26% of all the shots Southampton attempted in the Prem. And his contribution didn't end at goal scoring, closing down opponents 20 times a match, putting seventh in the competition for pressing, suggesting that his time under Klopp at Liverpool wasn't wasted, even if he spent most of it on the bench. His performances last term brought Ings' first England call up in five years, which he capped with a goal against Wales. And if he can maintain this form for another 12 months, don't rule out a trip to next summer's European Championships. So guys, that was 10 players too good for their current clubs. What did you guys think of the rundown? Did we miss anyone out though? Let me know in the comments down below. As I said earlier, don't forget to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye!